Right. Well, I come into acting very, very late in my life. When you're a salesman, you have to act. And it was around that time I got diagnosed with bipolar disorder. Yeah, well, it was like a breakdown, to be honest with you. Mm. Do you know what I mean? You know, I just I just couldn't cope. Something just snapped in my mind. They had like different classes. So they had like pottery class, mm. art class, and they had drama therapy group in there. Mm-hmm. And I really enjoyed it. Yeah. And when I come out of hospital, I thought, you know what? something I'd like to do. And I've done it purely for mental health reasons. Sometimes you do the scene, and then you wait for the show for a year, and then you watch the show and the scene is not there. Hmm. And I believe that I did a lot of my training as a salesman. I was pretty good at it, but, mm-hmm. but again, my ego stopped me from earning good money from it. Learning on the job is one of the best things you can do. I still got a bit of low self-esteem, you know, mm-hmm. but when I'm on camera, I could be someone totally different. Bipolar disorder. Oh, no. Can you explain to me what it is? My name is Andrei Rogozin, and this is Beyond Real Talk, a podcast where I talk to entertainment industry professionals and ask them real questions. What is their journey? What are they actually doing? How are they doing it? Why are they doing it? And how can you start doing the same thing? My today's guest is an actor and my very good friend, Scott Hiller. Hey, Scott. Hi, yeah, thanks for having me on there, yeah. Thank you for having me in your home. <laughs> You're more than welcome. Uh, and today I want to talk to you about like a lot of things. It's like acting, your process, how you got into acting. Uh, but I want to start from the very beginning. Where did you grow up? What did you do when you were young? And how did you get into acting? Right, okay. Um, My childhood, wow. Well, I'm 50 now, so uh, we're going back a few years. Um, <laughs> yeah, so I um, I was born in a place called Croydon mm-hmm. in South London. Um, I was born in 1974 with my mum, my sister, and my dad. Yeah, I was brought up with very strong characters in my household mm-hmm. and always felt like I had to fight to get my place, do you know what I mean? You mm-hmm. know? So um, I had a lot of ego as a child, you know? Yeah. yeah. Um, then I went to secondary school. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I suppose I was always a bit of a, a bit of a performer. You could call me the class clown at school, I suppose, you know, so I was always acting in some sort of form, but I just didn't know it then. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I did. Um, yeah, I suppose I had, yeah, I suppose I definitely had a lot of ego as a kid, you know, I wanted to be seen, do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. You know, it was a bit of a show off. Yeah. Um, so I remember doing sort of uh, a fashion, a fashion show. Yeah. Yeah. So I did a fashion show at school. Um, and then I, after I left school, I left school with hardly any qualifications at all. Mm-hmm. Um, I've always been a creative, you know, it's mm-hmm. just been in my blood, you know. Um, and the only subject that I was interested in was uh, art design, I suppose. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, it's the only thing I was good at. Uh, I got a great A in art and design. I left school and went into graphic design. Mm-hmm. Um, and um, yeah, I did that job for a while. Um, and I lost that job because I was too busy partying and doing stuff <laughs> I shouldn't have been doing, you know, at that age. Um, and then yeah. I had another graphic design job. Yeah, You know, like, it's like when you leave school, like he's like being thrust into the big wide world. He's like, you know, of course. It, it swallows you up, doesn't it? You know? Yeah. And, I mean, um, like when you're young, you, you're, you're kind of thinking about different things. You're like, you're not, you're not thinking about work. You're probably thinking about like, you know, girls or boys or whatever you're into. Yeah. And like, and you're thinking about that. And also you want, you want, you want to party. You just like discovering everything and you kind of like want to do that. And then like they make yeah. people make you work. You're like, oh, come on. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And like, I lived with my mum, so I didn't really, didn't really have any responsibilities. Mm-hmm. I'm very carefree. Um, you know, I'm a, I'm a bit gutted. I didn't take that sort of that, that um, journey into graphic design because mm-hmm. I had two jobs, which I screwed up. I totally yeah. screwed up. Yeah. And then I fell into retail, which I was in for about 15 years mm. uh, as a salesman mm. and it sounds strange, but you know, I do draw on a lot of my life experiences like acting mm. and I believe that I did a lot of my training as a salesman, mm. it's, you know, it sounds yeah. odd, but you know, when you're a salesman, you have to act, do you know what I mean? Of course. Yeah. You, know? you have to make people, you know, 
want the thing to yourself. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's like almost selling yourself, isn't it? Mm. So that they believe you mm. and they believe in the product that you're trying to sell because they believe in what you're saying. You were working in sales for? A good 15 years. Yeah. 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 And you were selling? Oh, God. I was selling um, menswear. Disney's yeah. attire, formal. Mm. It's very boring what I was selling. Well, like expensive. Expensive. Yeah. Well, middle of the range middle, sort of yeah. menswear, sort mm. of suits, shirts, mm. ties. You had a lot of business customers yeah. coming in. Yeah. Um, I was pretty good at it, but, mm. but again, my ego stopped me from earning good money from it because I would... I don't know, if you, if you had a guy come in and he was like, you know, he was a stockbroker or something like that and he had mm. lots of money and he had a, you know, an ego, I suppose, as big as mine. I, di I, I didn't like to help them. <laughs> <laughs> I, didn't like to, I didn't like to help the arseholes, but the arseholes had the money, you know? Yeah. So I'd end up helping the old lady, the old man with a mm. hundred quid in their pocket and I'd spend hours with them, but I wouldn't earn no commission of, of them. Yeah. <laughs> my pride got in the way, do you know what mm. I mean? You know, but, you know, I didn't mind that job, but unfortunately... Again, because I used to like to party on the weekends, mm -hmm. you used to have to work Saturdays and Sundays, mm -hmm. and it was, I threw a few sickies though, don't, don't get me wrong, yeah. I, well, who didn't? <laughs> Not that I ever did, but <laughs> I mean, but who didn't? Like, you know, like some companies, I've heard some companies actually even have this like, as kind of like official uh, part of the contract, like not like all the time, but you have a few days a year that not are even like part of your like, uh, you know, uh, yearly allowance, mm. but like when you really don't feel like coming to work, mm. you have like a couple of days like that when you just like call, the, call to work and say like, I'm not coming today. And uh, no explanation needed, but it's like not, not, no, I've heard there are companies like that and they're like maybe two, three days like that in a year, which sometimes, because honestly, sometimes you just like, you just can't, it's not, it doesn't mean that you don't like this job. It doesn't mean that you like it, <laughs> but it doesn't mean you don't like this job. It's just like, sometimes there are days when you kind of feel like I can't, I can't come. I need to stay home today. I need a blankie and a coffee and Netflix. You know? <laughs> no, literally, I run out of excuses. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I was, I was more or less always hungover. Mm -hmm. I they sort of sussed that out. Do you know yeah. what I mean? You know, um, but I did do a job as well because they, they, they had this. Um, another part of their business was um, um, weddings. You know, so I used to measure up people for their weddings and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But I also became their poster boy and I did a fashion show for them in Claridge's. No. So again, it's all sort of acting, mm. do you know what I mean? You no, know. I mean, like, yeah, like you could sometimes when you look back, uh, you can kind of see how you call it breadcrumbs that kind of lead you. The trail. Yeah, the trail that leads you to some kind of decision that you made. Like, oh, well, suddenly it was my decision. I, just, I decided to do acting out of nowhere. No, there was something, you know, back in your life that yeah. actually made you do it. So when did you decide that I want to try to be an actor? Right. Well, I come into acting very, very late in my life. Mm. Um, I was about... So I'm 50 now. So I was about 43 years old, you know, mm. so about seven, seven, seven or eight years ago. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Um, yeah, I had some personal issues going on in my life at the time. Um, I'd lost my job mm -hmm. and, um, you know, there was, uh, there's a bit of trauma going on with, with, with myself because I lost my granddad, mm. my nan, and then my dad got cancer and he died. Mm. Uh, I lost my girlfriend. Um, and you know, I had a lot of stuff going on and it was around that time I got diagnosed with bipolar disorder. Mm. Um, and I actually got hospitalized uh, for my condition. How, how, how did it happen? Like when, when like the, the very first time when you had this, uh, case of how, how do you call it? Like the bipolar, the, the bipolar or like it's a like manic episode. Manic mean? episode. Yeah. Um, yeah, well, it was like a breakdown, to be honest with you. Mm. Do you know what I mean? You know, I just, I just couldn't cope. Something just snapped in my mind. You mm -hmm. know, um, yeah, I've, I had a huge uh, drug problem at the time as well, mm. and that didn't help. Mm. Um, and then I was just, you know, my behaviour. I was very erratic, mm -hmm. and um, no, going back. Sorry, my dad was still alive with my first episode, and he noticed that my behaviour was, I was acting quite strange. Mm -hmm. And um, so he called the doctor mm -hmm. and I ended up in hospital. Yeah. And I was consequently sectioned under the Mental Health Act, unfortunately, because of my condition. Mm -hmm. But the beautiful thing about that 
he's a lot of people with bipolar are, are, are very creative people, highly creative people. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think I got sectioned again the year after that. And um, part of my recovery in hospital was to do, um, um, they had like different classes. So they had like pottery class, mm-hmm. art class, and they had a drama therapy group in there. Mm-hmm. And I really enjoyed it. Yeah. And when I come out of hospital, I thought, you know what? Something I'd like to do. And I've done it purely for mental health reasons. Yeah. Because I see it was like a, almost a sort of therapy for me to become someone else, mm-hmm. you know. But like, so uh, what what kind of classes uh, was that? Like, uh, did you perform something uh, with a group like in, in, in the hospital? Or what? I really, I can't remember. No. I really can't remember, mate. I can't mm-hmm. remember. Yeah. But you just, you just kind of like got sucked into it. <laughs> Yeah, I just knew it was something that I would wanted to pursue, you know. Mm. So I come out of hospital, I decided I wanted to give that a go. Mm. So I joined a few uh, acting agencies. Yeah. And one of them was one of the best in the business. It was called Ray Knight. Mm -hmm. And they specialize in um, supporting artists' work. So I joined them and they took me on. Yeah. And they do mainly TV work. Mm -hmm. So... I think my first gig was um, with a, it was a, my first big gig was with a comedy called Upstart Crow, starring the comedian David Mitchell. Mm -hmm. And I played like a henchman. So basically it was like a medieval comedy. He Mm -hmm. plays Shakespeare. And um, I was like uh, in this dungeon and um, and he was on a rack and I was like a, like a medieval sort of torturer, sort of henchman. And I had to stretch him on the rack and turn his will Mm. You know, and it was him on there. There was Lisa Tarbuck on set. It was Harry Enfield, mm. and um, Harry Enfield. Oh, he was great. I met <laughs> I met Ben Elton as well that day. He wrote mm. he wrote that comedy, and he's just a love of such a lovely man. And Harry Enfield come up to me and he said, "Cool, are you working in that dungeon, are you? I love that dungeon." <laughs> and um, I, you know, and then I got the you know got the got the taste for it. But there was a live audience. Yeah, in the, it was basically a BBC One comedy, but it was filmed in ITV studios, mm. and there was a live audience. And all I had to do was turn a wheel and stretch, stretch him on a rack. Yeah, you know. But it's amazing how nervous you can get when you got a live audience <laughs> like, in front of you. I had one job. Do you yeah. know what I mean? You know. But I, I, I you know, but if you look at that clip, I don't mm. know what episode it is. But uh, there was a bit of a smile on my face, you know, because the comedians are so funny that they actually, I'm trying to play this serious henchman. Yeah. And, and I, I, I couldn't help but laugh, but they kept, they kept it in. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Well, maybe you're a henchman who enjoy, enjoys his job, yeah. you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 True. True. All right. So, okay. Okay. And uh, so you, you started doing the kind of uh, the, the extra work, like essay work, yeah? Yeah. And you got a taste uh, for it. And then when did you decide to become an actor? Like just basically actually be, to be the one who delivers the lines? Um, God, I think it might have, I think I might have done the extra stuff for like about a year or so mm-hmm. to get some experience and, yeah. you know, like um, find out how it all works. Mm-hmm. And you know, it's the best advice I could give anyone who's starting out. Used to, used to, mm-hmm. you know, to start doing some extra work, you know. Yeah. Um, and to be on, be on a proper set. Do you know what I mean? You know. Yeah. I think it's a good idea because you will see how the set works, what's happening on set, and you understand that most of the time when you're on set, you just sit in the green room <laughs> for yeah. hours and hours. Yeah, you need patience, a lot yeah. of patience, definitely. Mm-hmm. And sometimes you don't even get used. You know, you could be there for the whole day, mm-hmm. but then they'll pay you. Do you know yeah. what I mean? But um, yeah. Um, and then I did, I got a part for Silent Witness. It was my first speaking role mm-hmm. for Silent Witness. And I got a chauffeur to pick me up and then yeah. drive me to the set. It was like, and I thought, yeah, yeah. this is how I can get used yeah. to this, you know. And I went to do the scene and because the weather, I don't think the weather matched up with what they had previously shot. Mm-hmm. So the AD, the, the chauffeur, like they wound down the window, and the AD went, "No, we're not doing it today. We're not mm. doing the scene." And I, you know, yeah, no, I know it happens. Sometimes you do the scene, and then you wait for the show for a year, and then you watch the show, and the scene is not there. It's not there. <laughs> Speaking from yeah. experience, <laughs> this is this is a common thing, isn't it? Yeah. You know, yeah. yeah. So our our egos take a bit of a battering, don't they? Mm. Do you know what I mean? You know. Yeah, I know, I know. Yeah, it's it's. it's uh, But yeah, so af- after that, 
I thought I'd, I'd really like to pursue this properly rather mm. than just do the essay work. I like to try and try and be an actor. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Why not give it a go? Mm. So I started off, I basically joined some fa- Facebook groups. Mm-hmm. So it's like basically I got into these massive sets, but then I just felt like I had to start from the bottom. Do you mm-hmm. know what I mean? If I wanted to be an actor. Mm-hmm. So I didn't, you know, my, I probably done it the wrong way around really, but I didn't have any training and, and I don't recommend that. I recommend people get training. Yeah. You know? Um, so I didn't have any training, but what I did do is I learned on the job. Yeah. So I, I got as much practical experience as I could. Mm. So I started off doing student films. Yeah. So I joined some groups. I think one was called Actors UK. Yeah. Um, and yeah. And then they're always advertising for, for, for student films. Mm-hmm. So I've done a, a few student films. Yeah. And then got myself a show reel together. Yeah. 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 It's, it's, it's a good way to be fair. Like, because, uh, I, I would still say, like, if, if you want to start, like, if you guys want to start, like, acting, like, you need to study. You need to try to, like, to, to get some training. I'm not saying, like, you need to necessarily go to some kind of very expensive, like, uh, universities or whatever, but, like, it's, it's better to get some training. But at the same time, if you, And again, like it's it's a very hard question about like what 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 is actually talent because you know like there's a lot of people saying like oh he's so talented she's so talented they're so talented but mm. sometimes it's like talented is what what is talent mm. the ability and joy from learning something is a talent maybe yeah. you know yeah. uh, but some people can be kind of uh, in acting at least like some people can get into the situation when they need to act without actually having a lot of training and they can do it, mm. they still will have to learn. Oh, you uh, know they, what? Yeah, like, I, I don't do what I did. <laughs> um, yeah, so, but I, I, I felt like, you know, but doing all those student films, I, it, it, it was, you know, I did it the long way round, but, but I felt like learning on the job is one of the best things you can do. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? But of definitely, course. definitely get some training, mm. you know. Um, yeah, which I'm going to be doing this year. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, like you've been doing it for a while and I, I acted across you because we, we did like, first of all, we like, we did two projects together. One was like the very first time when I met you, I think it was 2018. And we, this, we did this like very, like super extra mega short film. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Trapped <laughs> called yeah. Trapped when, uh, we both were playing henchmen <laughs> And not you, typecast at all. Not uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you were my boss, and I kind of betrayed you. Yeah. And you know what? Like maybe maybe I'll show it like on the screen while we're talking about it. Uh, yeah, that's when when we met the first time. And to be fair, like I was sure that you were a trained actor. Oh wow! Because I really enjoyed working with you. I think I think you were pretty good at it. Well, I've got to say, I think all credit goes to James Bush as well. Yeah, he's a bloody good director. Yeah, you James uh, Bush directed it, and we had amazing uh, DOP uh, Richard yeah. Oaks, who yeah. who made, who it made look us like, look good. He made yeah. us look great. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and also, because I was fairly new then, really, mm. I didn't have a lot of experience to yeah. be honest with you. But um, I remember James said to me, "When you do that scene, don't don't just do it really sort mm. of." Bring it down. Yeah. You know what I mean? You know, don't be, you don't have to shout and be menacing. Do you know mm-hmm. what I mean? You just do it really subtly. And he told me the art of being subtle on camera. It's, yeah, I agree. Like, as they say, you know, like less is more. And it is. <laughs> I mean, sometimes we need to bring more. Some Actually, sometimes, yeah. sometimes it can be hard to bring more than you think is needed. But like, it just needs to be real. The thing is like, sometimes like less is more when it's really, when it's real. <laughs> yeah, it depends on the scene, I suppose. Yeah, it? you know. But in general, like yeah, subtlety on camera, it's it's like so different from from theater because in the theater, like you kind of need to be bigger, you need to be louder, you need to project, you need yeah. to understand like people like on on a row twenty should kind of see and hear you and also yeah. kind of like uh, read all the emotions. Uh, but on camera, like it picks up every subtle little thing, so you don't need to give too much unless it's like the scenery meets it. Yeah, but no, uh, so what we were saying, like, I think that like you, like we all need to get training, of course, but you got training on the job because mm-hmm. you did quite a, like quite a few projects since, since you started, yeah. which is like you have a, a very good portfolio. You are a living proof that you can start anything late in life 
and still kind of you know you have chance to succeed uh and i think it's it's a good message but like what uh, what i want to ask you <laughs> what is acting for you why do you enjoy acting ah oh, that's a good question you know um i don't know it's the only thing i've really had true passion for mm -hmm. but why i love the adrenaline mm -hmm. sure I don't know why I do it. Do you know, to be honest with you, I don't know why I do it because I end up driving myself mad when the when the project actually. I love actually the the process of you know learning learning the lines mm -hmm. and discovering the character and shooting the project. But when it comes out, I'm like shit, you know, and I drive myself mad and I beat myself up and I think, why am I putting myself through this? Do you know what I mean? You know, yeah, yeah, because we, we're being vulnerable, aren't we? Mm -hmm. And we, you know, we, you know, we're putting ourselves on the line for everyone to see like at least theatre mm. you know when it's done it's done isn't it but once you're on camera and you're on that film I mean I've done a lot of shit don't get me wrong <laughs> a lot of shit and it's once it's out there it's out there isn't it you know yeah, yeah uh, um, but but going back to your question why do I like it um, I think I think it's just a great release for me mm -hmm. a great release you know I just it's, it's, yeah it's just fun it's just fun. It's the only job I've, I've ever done, which I've enjoyed. Yeah, I know. Uh, I, I agree with you. I agree with you because I think we started acting like a, approximately like kind of same same time period. Uh, what, like last eight, seven years, probably. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I think also, and it's a, I'll still stick to this now. I just want to get good at it. And it's like, I'm going to beat this. I'm going to. I'm going to get this great performance. You know mm. what I mean? You know, and, and, and you're only as good as your last job, aren't you? Do you know what I mean? And, yeah. and I'm always chasing it. Do you know, what I mean? it's like a buzz. It's like a drug almost. Mm. You know, you're, you're sort of chasing it. Do you know what I mean? You yeah. Know? I think, yeah. I think that, 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 that's, a, uh, that's a very weird thing. Like, I, because I thought about it a lot. Uh, it's it, like, it's, it's a thing, like, uh, it's a weird profession because, like, 99% of what you get is rejection. Hmm. for who, for basically who you are because you can't be anyone else like uh and when you do the additions you know like just like you did an addition you forgot about it you don't even think about it after that hmm. and this is one of the professions when you have to deal with it all the time and we still choose to do it like we still kind of pur purposefully choose to put ourselves in the spotlight <laughs> for a lot of people to look at us yeah yeah critique us yeah and then yeah i mean like a good audience doesn't want to critique you i think like the good audience usually wants to be you know mesmerized by you like and the, i think the good audience that is really interested into what you're like like in the film or theater play or like whatever you're doing like your performance they want to believe you they don't want to judge you because like they want to see the story and they can forgive a lot of things that like even if you think acting was awful the good audience kind of like they 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 want to be light they want to believe you so they will be kind of kind to you to a degree until you <laughs> really fuck up <laughs> yeah. but at the same time we know that and we put ourselves in that position and that's why I, I don't know. I, honestly, I I do believe that there is a little bit some some kind of some some kind of part of narcissism in us. <laughs> yeah, do you think? Well, I, if I'm being truthful with myself, yeah. I did when I first started out. I loved the I loved to be applauded. I mm -hmm. loved all the likes. And yeah. you know, I used to put my work out there. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You know, and I suppose there is an element of that. Yeah. But <clears throat> not now. Not now, no. I, I'm, I'll, I'll do it because I just want to. I just the only thing I want to be good at. Yeah, you know but I mean? why? Why? Why that exact thing? Why not something else? Because you want to. Like there is a lot of other professions, a lot of other things that you could do that you could get good at and enjoy the process of doing it without putting yourself out there for other people to we must, see. We must be, maybe not narcissists, maybe we must have masochistic tendencies or something. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe maybe we just want like, you know, some level of approval. Maybe they're like, maybe we're missing something from our maybe, childhood. Do you know what? Something. Maybe, yeah. maybe, maybe. We want to be seen. We want to be yeah. heard, maybe. Yeah. You know? I mean, like, and again, like I'm looking back at my childhood. It's not like I haven't been seen by my 
parents. It's not like I didn't have enough attention. But for some reason right now, I feel like, and it's not even like, the, like I don't want to sound like, you know, like, oh, I want to be loved by everyone. No, I want to do a good job. But I also, like, I want to, like, I enjoy the process of just acting, like being with another person on camera or on stage. But I also want it to be appreciated, like, in a way that people, like, can enjoy and see that, like, yeah, he did a good job. Yeah, no, absolutely. Well, there's nothing wrong with that, is there? You know, I, I don't know. I, I I'm mean, not a psychologist. I, I, I'm definitely, I'm definitely damaged. Yeah. I'm healing now, but I was mm. definitely damaged. Mm -hmm. Even when I come into this business, I was damaged. Mm -hmm. And I grew up a little bit damaged. Mm -hmm. And I think it goes back to that low self-esteem, doesn't it? A little bit. Do you know what I mean? With, with myself anyway, I, I still got a bit of low self-esteem, you know, mm -hmm. but when I'm on camera, I could be someone totally different. Do you know what I mean? You know? I, I don't believe, I mean, look, I think that, yeah, you can be someone different, but I don't think you can be someone completely different because even if you're playing something that you're not, hmm. let's say you're playing a murderer. Hmm. And obviously, well, I hope <laughs> none of us <laughs> is a murderer and we don't have like, you know, murdering tendencies. But when you play, you can't become someone who's completely not you. Everything, all the emotions that you it's use. It's got to come from you, yeah. It's coming from you. It's yeah. still you. It's, it's still yeah. like, it's, I mean, like maybe it's not murder you, but you angry you. Well, yeah. for example, like the anger or like, or kind of like this emotion that someone yeah, can read as truth, hatred. Yeah, the truth is pouring out of yeah. you, right? Yeah. So it's still kind of you. So I think maybe like, do, do you think when you started acting, uh, you learned something new about yourself? about you as a person like did you when you started like yeah no, i suffer yeah. from low self-esteem <laughs> <laughs> and i'm damaged yeah ah, well um, you isn't <laughs> <laughs> i learned that i'm my own worst critic that's for sure yeah oh you know, yeah and i'm very very tough on myself you know still very tough on myself yeah, yeah. like I, i'm getting better i'm yeah. getting better with age yeah but you know i've learned to let things go now I just let, let things go. Do you know Have you I mean? got used to looking at yourself on screen? No, no, never. Still, never. I hate it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there must be an element, element of narcissism because yeah. I, will, I will. This is this is going on camera now, but I will watch myself over and over and over just to pick holes in myself. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I know. You know, <laughs> and that is must be some. That must be narcissism, mustn't it? I think so. I think to a degree, yeah. Because like, well. <laughs> I guess. I but I'm know. not, but there's a difference between, oh, look at me, look at me. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I mean, you just like, you want to do a good job. You just want to like, you, you want, for me, kind of, I think that being an actor, like I want to be a part of a story. Like, mm -hmm. so someone is telling a story, director, probably like, well, for, first it was screenwriter. Mm -hmm. uh, then director decided like, I will tell the story my way. And you're a tool in this story and you want to be a good part of it. You want to be a good tool in the story. You don't want to ruin it. You want to make the story better with like how you perform. Mm. Uh, but at the same time, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, like it's, it's a weird profession to, to choose. It really is. Honestly, because yeah, like no. if, if we talk, like let's talk about money, for example. Oh, not that dirty word. Uh, I, I think my acting teacher, Lee Lomas from Working Actors Studio told me, uh, that around 10% of all actors hmm. can live by just, you know, working as actors without any additional income. And only like about 1% are actually really successful. Choosing this profession, hmm. it's in a way, it's masochism. <laughs> That's what I said. <laughs> it is. Like, it's basically, if you, thinking about this profession and you're thinking about glory, fame, money, do something else. <laughs> Seriously, because like, it's just, just, we do that just because there is nothing else mm. that we want to do. Mm. Wouldn't you agree with that? Yeah. I mean, I've, I've never ever, and this is the God's honest truth. I've never, I've never wanted fame. I've never, I mean, mm -hmm. obviously the money's nice, mm -hmm. but I think that money is just a byproduct of doing something you enjoy. Do you know what I mean? And you know? being good at it. Yeah, this is it. This mm -hmm. is it, you know? And as I said, that's all I want to do. Mm -hmm. That's that's the only reason I do it. Yeah. Um. You know, I'm not, 
you know, it, it's so hard to break into the business and make a career out of it. Mm-hmm. You know, but I, I don't, I've never looked at, I've never wanted to sort of, never said to myself, oh, I need to be successful at mm-hmm. this. Do you know what I mean? You know, I've never, I've just, I've just, I just do it. Do you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Yeah. You know, and then yeah. see what happens. <laughs> That's yeah. what you could do, isn't it? Yeah, I agree. I think it is just like, if you don't enjoy the process and this, like this, this, this is where the journey is the destination. Mm. Because if you're trying to kind of get somewhere, like if you have a goal, like, I don't know, like, I want to be, I don't know, get a main role in this big production film. And this is the goal. I don't think, first of all, there is no guarantee you'll get there. Maybe you'll always be like playing some, end up playing some supportive roles. Mm. Mm. You got to enjoy the process. Absolutely. Because you might not get, and even if you do get there, then you might realize like, and then what, that's it. Mm. <laughs> Mm-hmm. You're not like you're. You're probably doing this for the process, not for for the end goal. Uh, so I think yeah, it's it's worth. Like, how do you? What's your process like when you get the audition? How do you kind of like how like do you still get nervous? Do you still kind of like you get I don't know worried about like do I get it? Do I not get the job? Like what what's happening? What when I do the audition? Yeah. No, I don't. I don't tend to worry about that. I just see. I just see if I get if I get the chance to audition. Mm. I just see that as an opportunity to f- perform mm. for the director or the casting director. You know. Yeah. Um, yeah, I get ner- I get nerves, but it's good nerves. Mm. You know. And Do I don't have any. I don't. I definitely don't have expectations. Yeah. No, I used to, but yeah. I don't know. How How did you learn to let it go? Just by loads of constant rejection, <laughs> you know. Yeah, I do. Unfortunately, I do. yeah, uh, and you, you just yeah, you just learn to you know. Yeah, I just I just enjoy I just enjoy it. So mm. I don't look at the outcome anymore. Yeah, I think I think it's like you're in a good place when you kind of learn to uh, treat every audition as a chance to perform to be seen. Mm. And I got to say, I'm saying this right now, but I got to say, like, I didn't think I'm there. Mm. I mean, sometimes I am. Mm. Sometimes I'm there. Sometimes I feel like, yeah, thank God. And sometimes like, oh, again, I'll just do this. I'll do whatever I can. I'll do it as best as I can at this moment. I'll send it out and I'll forget about it and nothing will come out of it. And the funny thing is just, it's, it's, it was hard. I know for me, it was hard to learn not to put pressure, like, and not to expect anything from, from, because like when I, when it just started, like every, every audition I got, like, I remember like I was auditioning for, uh, Stranger Things. Wow. And like, you know, when you audition for it, like, you just like, come on now, yeah, yeah, come on, yeah, come on. Course. And then three years later, you're watching a new season. And you're like, it's like, you're, cause you're like, you feel like you're getting close, don't you? You're yeah. like, you're at least close to the hurdles. You know what I mean? Mm. You know? Yeah. yeah. But what a wild, amazing what an amazing experience to be able to have the opportunity to, you know, audition for the casting director of Stranger Things, you know, that's awesome, mate. Yeah, but again, like when you don't get anything from it and you don't even get any feedback, you have no idea. Maybe now you're in some blacklist. No. <laughs> and they're like, never again, not no, this guy. No, that's your head telling you that. <laughs> this is just the nature of the beast, isn't it? You know. <laughs> yeah, but like how, how often do you get the feedback from casting directors? Um, never. I've not, I don't think I've had any feedback yeah. before. No, no, no. I like I did. I had sometimes, not often, but like there were some casting directors that were like at least they kind of were kind enough to write back. Maybe it was just a standard few lines that they sent to all the actors that auditioned. I don't know. But like it's some of them kind of like come back with like, yeah, not this time. We like the take. It was like interesting reading. Really. Like it's interesting oh yeah. Reading. If I've got, I think I've got feedback when I've got. Recall. Mm-hmm. I've got a recall before. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've got, I've got feedback. Yeah. No. Now there, like there, there is one. <laughs> there is one project that I auditioned for. I will not name it now on camera. <laughs> no. <laughs> but there, there is one project that I auditioned for seven times for seven different roles. In, wow. In probably two or three years. Yeah. And you feel like if they keep coming back, then they probably liked it. So it's a good sign. But then recently they stopped stopped 
I'm coming back. <laughs> so I'm not sure maybe they don't like me anymore. Well, see, are, you, are you talking about a casting director or? Uh, basically, like there was like one one project. So project. Yeah, it's oh, so, well, like, like one, series. One, one series. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So they were coming back to me like seven times. Uh, like, That's I just really good though, times. still. It's still really good though. Not recently though. And I checked the. Uh, I know that my agent uh, applied me for this like, the same series for new roles, mm. like that could kind of fit my description, my casting type. And they didn't ask me to record anything. Yeah. Maybe they decided like, nope, we don't like him anymore. Or maybe they decided like, you know what? We already like, we have seven tapes from him. <laughs> so we know what he can yeah, do. Sometimes <laughs> our, our faces, we can get like burnt out. Do you know what I mean? Mm. You know, overexposed maybe. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I th well, anyways. All we can do is just hope, right? Just, and just do our just, job and just enjoy enjoy yeah. the process. That's that's why I do the acting class, like uh, this working actor studio, which is like home for me. Like I've been there since 2018, probably. I think so, yeah, from, from the very beginning of 2018. And that's like, you, you learn a script a uh, week. You analyze it, you learn it, you perform it in front of people. It, it's being recorded and then you see yourself like, and I actually, I think I got used to looking at myself on screen. That's good, that's good. And plus, you know, you go to those workshops or acting classes mm -hmm. and, and inevitably people do their own projects as well, don't yeah. they? Do you know what I mean? You know, so you're networking at the same time mm -hmm. and you know, maybe, the, you know, the, the teacher might have a, his own production coming out and mm. cast you. Mm. So, you know. Yeah, yeah, I think, uh, I think it's a good, like, just in general, uh, I think one of the great things about acting is that you meet a lot of new people and a lot of them are incredibly talented. Mm. Uh, sometimes it can encourage you because you feel like I meet a lot of amazing people. Sometimes it can discourage you because you feel like I can't do shit like <laughs> he dances she sings yeah they do both things and also like juggling or whatever like and i can barely walk <laughs> well don't concentrate I, I, I would say that's one of the big mistakes i used to make is looking looking yeah. at what other people are doing and where they're mm. at you know what i mean you've got to concentrate on yourself i, I believe yeah i think so i think i think i agree with you i agree with you uh do you look back at like when you started and see the progress? No, it's strange. You can, it's like, it's almost that progress is almost, you don't notice it. It's like invisible, isn't it? Mm. But at the same time, you start getting somewhere with mm -hmm. it. But you don't realize you're getting somewhere. Yeah, I mean, like, I, yeah. I just... I, and, you, and you look back, but then if I look back on my old, old work, which I never do because yeah. I'm so ashamed of it, some of it, mm -hmm. You know, I would look at, I would think, fucking hell, I have got sort of somewhere, I've made progress, mm. but we never, it's a never ending process, I think. No, but uh, what, what I mean, like, do, like, if you look back at your old kind of jobs and you see, like, you know what, I, I know that I am better now than I was back then. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think it helps. I think, well, I mean, like, it, for me, it worked both ways because I remember I was, like, recently I was cleaning up my hard drive from old self tapes mm. and there are some self tapes i watched i was like and i remember like i remember recording them and sending them and thinking like it was a good one yeah and now looking at it like oh my fucking god it's so bad <laughs> and i was like how the disgusting director came back to me later with like another auditions it was so bad but sometimes uh no i did a short film a student short film and I remember watching it like at the, you know, premiere mm. with the guys who filmed it and thinking, oh, it's so bad. And then two years later, I'm watching it again. I'm like, you know what? It's not that bad. Actually, it's not that bad. Now it's like when I don't expect anything from it and I don't remember how it was. Like, I don't still, like, it's not fresh in my memory. Yeah. The actual part of when I was performing it and thinking how it might look when you watch it and it's very different. Yeah. That, like, then when you watch it later, sometimes you feel like, yeah, no, actually, I'm not as bad. I'm all right. Yeah. <laughs> I think we make up stories in our head. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. The way we see us, maybe other people don't see us. Do you know what I mean? Or, uh, for or, or, sure. Or what the di director sees in us, we mm -hmm. don't see. Mm. You know, we might, they might, with an audition, you might think it's bad, but they might see one little thing mm -hmm. and they think, yeah, I can, I can use him for this. You know what I mean? Or that, mm. you know? Yeah. Yeah. I think so. I think, I think it's very important to trust the, the director. 
Yeah, which I don't do a lot. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I kind of, I really wanted to believe director because I remember when I was doing some projects, like, and I was so like, I'm so, like, I was watching back the takes. I was like, that's not good. And then you speak to people, speak to director, director, like, it's really good. You're like, you know what? I'll trust you, but at the same time, I don't think it is. <laughs> so when a director tells you you've done a really good job, yeah. Do you still, do you still, is that enough for you or do you still don't believe it? I think classes really helped me to get used to watching myself on screen because at first I, I honestly, I thought I just want to punch the screen like every time I saw my face. <laughs> but, uh, I think, I think we, like, as you said, we all have this kind of, uh, imposter syndrome. But the more you look at yourself on screen, the more you get used to it. Like, it's like hearing your voice as well. Like, because I remember when I heard my voice for the first time, I was like, what? No, <laughs> no, it can't be. <laughs> but now you hear uh, stories even about like, like I remember Tom Hanks was saying, telling the story, like he was like, yeah, every time I start a new film, uh, I feel like now they will figure out, they will see that I'm, I'm not good. Really? Yeah. And then when you hear something like that about Tom Hanks, you think like, you know what? That's all right for me to have this feeling as well. <laughs> yeah. Fine. Yeah. Because so, I, I even hate, <clears throat> even if I send someone a voice note, I play it back to myself mm -hmm. and think, shit, I hate my voice. Well, anyways, look, um, let's talk about how you work on the scenes. Like, so for example, you got a scene, like it's a self tape or you got a role and you have to prepare. Like, what, what's your process? How do you prepare for the role? I just keep it simple. Mm. I just read the scripts a few times. Mm and get a feel of it. Mm. Um, and then I, I read for my character. And then I learn the lines inside out, back to front. Mm -hmm. I usually, um, I use a, uh, an app called Line Learner. Mm -hmm. So I record, yeah. I record my lines and then I record the other characters' lines. Mm -hmm. So, and that's the way I learn because I learn through audio. I'm not very good with learning just off of a paper. Because mm -hmm. it goes because of my ADHD, it goes in one ear and out the other. Do you know mm. what I mean? Yeah. <clears throat> so I, I like to learn with audio, um, and then I yeah. So I just I look at the scene and I basically find out what you know how I'm trying to affect the other character, what I want from the other character, mm -hmm. and then I make a choice. Yeah. With, regarding you know my intention. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? How, yeah. how am I going to affect that character? And what, what is my object, objective? How do I uh, overcome my objective for that yeah. scene? You know, yeah. How is the line learning for you? I'm pretty good. Yeah? Yeah, I'm pretty good. At the beginning, I find it really difficult. Mm -hmm. But then when I break the back of it, I'm, I'm, you know, but my yeah. concentration span is really bad. Mm -hmm. And I have to be super focused. And I think a lot of it, is trust isn't it when you when you actually when it's like sort of filming day mm. when it's shoot day you have to trust that them lines are in locked inside of you yeah and but how like that's... how much time do you do you think you need to learn a short scene that is like two three four minutes long mm -hmm. um i find that learning putting my headphones on at night mm -hmm. with that line learner app mm -hmm. it's, it's surprising how it sinks in oh, really? i, I never tried it before you go to bed it's yeah. just it, yeah and it, yeah, it's the best time to learn before you go to bed because it goes in. Interesting. I need to try that. I never tried that. Try I it. never, like, never, uh, because usually how I learn the lines, and especially for the class, you know, like in class when we, we usually learn, I kind of got into a habit of learning both parts, hmm. which I think, like, it makes it easier for me. Like, at first, when you just, like, when you just learn only your, your part and you kind of, like, uh, don't really remember what the other character says. I think like it's better for me when I learn both both parts. I always learn yeah. both both parts. Yeah, yeah. I, I literally memorize the other person's lines mm. as well. Yeah, because yeah. I, I think it's just like it's just easier, like and flows better, and you know your cues much better. I think absolutely. It's... Yeah, definitely. Because I used to do it where you just my mate said to me, just learn the last word of the other person's line. But I like to mm. learn. I like to know the yeah. other person's line. Yeah. I you mean, like, I mean. there is not a danger, like, when you know the lines inside out, like, and you're, like, the other person's lines as well, like, they might not be as 
as a surprise for you to react for, but you know that's that's yeah, the job. Yeah, but you get the so, so, so I don't. I'll be a liar to say I know their lines inside out, mm -hmm. but I get the gist mm -hmm. of them. So you get the gist of their character, don't mm -hmm. you? And what you know, what yeah. You know. Yeah, I mean like, the thing is, it's just because I've heard like some actors they say, like I learned it like seventy five percent. Hmm. And then I know them enough, but at the same time, then just like when I kind of like start to, you know, act in the scene, hmm. it's more fresh and more real. Yeah. Yeah. It, you see, as a non English speaker, because the English is not my, like, not my native language, like, I have to learn word to word. <laughs> I would have never have guessed that. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, so I, I actually had to learn word to word because if I try to, you know, like improvise and like change the line a little bit, like, but I'll make a mistake. <laughs> By the way, your English is great, mate. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. It's not as great as I would like it to be, but it's much better than when I just came like 10 years ago when I came to London. I, I, I <laughs> the thing is, when I came to London from Latvia, I was like, I know English. I watched all the series and all the films and you know in English and then yeah. I came like oh there is the different English this is the original English and there there is like another English, English. American English I think English is a complicated language so you know I could just about fucking speak English <laughs> <laughs> no I mean it's like I think every language is complicated like there are like there are some things in English that I don't still don't really understand uh, you know especially uh, all this a and D, like for non-English speakers, like it's just it's just a nightmare. Like even if you kind of know the rule, there's always the ex some exception from the rule, and you're like, oh, I don't well, really. The, you, you're talking about the grammar. You mean the grammar? No, I mean like just just the articles uh, Z and A. Like when is the back? When it's a back? Oh, like, okay. You know, or, and uh, I think non-English, like not native English speakers, they kind of mix it up all the time even when they know the rules. Uh, but at the same time, like my native language is Russian. I'm like Russian speaking, Ukrainian, born in Latvian, USSR. It's like, it was kind <laughs> of like, it, it's a mess. But the thing is like Russian language in comparison to English is, is a mess. Mm -hmm. Because like you have, like when you put together a sentence, there is a structure to it. Yeah. And you put the sentence in very specific order. The words go in a specific order. Mm -hmm. For example, you say, I love you. You can't say love I you, <laughs> you know? Yeah. In Russian, you can. <laughs> you can just put words in any order you wow. want. <laughs> and sometimes it just changes kind of the mood of the sentence. Wow. <laughs> so it's kind of like it's flexible, but also messy. So yeah. it's, it's like it's, it's, it's different. Uh, but anyways, <laughs> let's, let's uh, switch back to what was your most exciting role? Um, I'd have to say, hands down, is when I auditioned for EastEnders and got the part. Mm. Yeah. It was like a dream come true. It really was. Yeah. Because that was one of my goals, mm. to be on EastEnders. Yeah. Um, and I was just over the moon when I got that role. Because mm. I auditioned for it, I think, on the Friday. And then I got the call from my agent on the Monday saying that I got the part. That's you insane. Know. So um, quick as well. Really, yeah. And it was like two scenes as well, two really good scenes. Mm. You know, it's a, you know, it's only a small role, but it was, no, it was a great, it was a great, it's yeah. a great part, you know, mm. and it was a big scene because the, like a lot of the, a lot of the cast were in that scene. Mm. So it was like half of the square come out to mm. see what was going on in that, you know, in that sort of, in that yeah. scene, you know. But now that was probably hands down one of the, well, mm. it's probably the best day in my acting nice career um, but like w w was it challenging like the the actual role was it challenging for you yeah, yeah. There, was, there was so much to do in that scene mm. so much so yeah how how many takes did it take to film the scene um you only get a couple of takes mate mm. they give you a, well oh yeah of course because like it's like a soap so it's it's, it's, very it's really because there's like five cameras mm -hmm. on you do you know what i mean and it's yeah. But they did change my lines at the very last minute. Of course they did. Um, oh, and I was like, oh shit. And I knew the way it was written, it didn't roll off the tongue. Mm -hmm. And I thought, I'm gonna trip up on these lines. Yeah. I know I am. And the you know, you know, the more you think about it, of course, you know you're gonna trip up. Yeah. Right? So I tripped up on these lines and I I'd done about three takes and I was like, oh shit. And I started panicking. I thought, no, just bring it back, come back to the present moment and just mm -hmm. chill out. Hmm. So I went up to the director, I said, would you mind if I change a couple of words? Mm -hmm. And he said, no, it's absolutely fine. And then 
Nice. Bingo. I just, mm. I, I managed to nail it. Yeah. In two takes. I've done it in two takes. Mm. And um, and you can't you can't imagine the relief I had when, when, when it started flowing. Do you know yeah, what I mean? Of course. Yeah. Because you, know, exactly. you, you are under pressure. Yeah. Because they've only got a certain amount of time to, mm -hmm. to do, you know, those scenes. Mm -hmm. And I thought, oh, I don't want to let, I don't want to let the rest, I don't want to let the director down. I don't want to yeah. let the rest of the cast down, mm -hmm. you know. And, um, and, uh, basically at lunchtime, I went into the BBC CAF and, um, I met, I don't know if you know the comedian Brian Connolly. No, I don't think so. No, no he was a big, big, big comedian in mm -hmm. the, in the nineties. And, um, he's actually, I don't know if he's still in the EastEnders, but he was in it at the time, big mm -hmm. star in it. And, uh, I said, oh man, I said, I just kept messing up my lines. Mm -hmm. I said, don't worry about it. He goes, your first day here? I said, yeah. He said, he said, I've, he goes, I absolutely shit myself when I first started here. He, he said, I had to take a fucking Valium. <laughs> and he just made me laugh, you know. But, um, nice. yeah. but it, you know, it was just so, such a lovely group of people mm -hmm. to work with. And it was so, I felt so welcomed, like, you know, because mm -hmm. you think, I felt like, oh man, am I going to be like an outsider because I've only got this small little role? Yeah. But they really make you feel like part of the family, you know, mm. on that day. And it's just like, I met these, you know, it's weird, isn't it? When you work on a show or like a film, mm. it's like you've got a new temporary family, haven't you? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. You know, yeah. And, and that's the bit I don't like when you leave that family and, mm. and you don't, probably don't see them again, you know? For, <laughs> yeah, most of the time, I mean, like, uh, <laughs> everywhere like there could be some drama or whatever but most of the time especially on like on projects like that because people there they work together for years and years so they they should be kind of like they should be in a good you know relationship between each other otherwise yeah. it's just like it, it, it's not a job it's hell <laughs> you know, and it's well, so yeah. nice to get in there because they do that day in and day yeah. out do you know what i mean the, you yeah. know the main cast of that they're working they work they don't hardly get any time off you know on those mm. shows yeah you know and when you go on that the Al Albert Square, when mm -hmm. you go on Albert Square, it's exactly, it looks exactly like it does on the television. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, everything seems so real. The set is so real. It's unbelievable. Mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. And it's like you're in, like, you think, wow, am I dreaming or something? You know what I mean? I'm, I'm, in, I'm on this show. Nice. You know, but yeah. there was that role. And I've recently done um, uh, a film for Howard J. Ford. Mm hmm. He's uh he he's done he's done some great stuff. He makes some great thrillers. And, um, he had one recently on Netflix called The Ledge, mm -hmm. um, and he's done a film called Escape. And yeah, I've seen something on Facebook. Yeah, I I, I love that playing that role. I played a yeah. very bad man. Yeah, and that film is about it's about sex trafficking, mm -hmm. and I played I played one of the jailers. Yeah. So um yeah, I played a very bad man, but I really enjoyed that role. Yeah. Yeah. Was it, was it, it was probably like to play someone like that. It's like, it's kind of emotionally challenging as well. Right. Not really. Yeah. Not, no, it wasn't, you know, no, it wasn't. It was, no, it wasn't. No, mm. no. It, cause I think, cause I knew a lot of the girls as well. Do you know yeah. what I mean? You know, but I just, yeah, but it was, um, uh, it's quite a dark role. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But, um, so that's been sold in America, apparently, mm -hmm. that film. And I had about six scenes in that one. Nice. So that was another highlight. Mm. Um, yeah. So Howard, Howard J. Ford, he's, uh, he's great to work for. Lovely guy. Nice. Did, did um, you already have like a premiere here in UK? We time? had the um, screening mm -hmm. for the cast and crew. Yeah. But I think he's going to have the premiere uh, sometime this year. Yeah. Because I think it's coming out in the UK this year. Yeah. It's called Escape. And how was it? Uh, did you enjoy watching yourself on big screen in this one? Or it was you know what? same I, as I always? Mu I must admit, yeah, I've got to be truthful, really. I, I didn't mind myself on that. On that, um, mm -hmm. I didn't mind watching that one, actually. Yeah, because you know when you've done a good one, don't you? Or if you've done like a... I think most of the time... A do. doozy, do you know what I mean? Like, it's like EastEnders. I didn't mind me watching that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, oh, I, don't, I don't know. I still, I still, it's still weird. I still, I still find it weird. But. No, I mean, like, yeah, as I said, like, I think for me, it takes time. Sometimes, sometimes it just like uh, you feel like uh, it was awful. Then you watch it like later, like, hey, it wasn't too bad. And uh, sometimes, I don't know. Sometimes it, it looks fine. Hmm. And then you watch your self tapes two years later. I think, oh my god, <laughs> oh my god, I thought it was good. <laughs> but have you ever done a? 
if you've ever been on, if you've done a, like a, a film and you, you think, oh man, that's awful, absolutely awful. Like what you think you've done an awful performance and then when it comes out, you think, ooh. No, I mean, like I did. Because um, uh, we've got no control over the edit, yeah, have we? No, once, no. once you've done you, the interpretation mm. of that character and, and yeah. you know. That's it. I mean, like you, you can only hope that editor will save you. <laughs> editor will pick all the best moments and will kind of cut all the worst moments. Mm. <laughs> so you kind of that's the only hope you have. But I, I did the pilot episode for Waving at Strangers. It was directed and uh, written by Lee Lomas. The, the I, I auditioned for that. Yeah. 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 So I did that, like, so I was basically, uh, I had a role, one of the roles, like, of the one of the main guys in this one, like, in the pilot episode. And when I watched it, I didn't like it, even though everyone were, the people were like, Lee was like, it's actually really good. I really, I'm really happy with what you did. It was really nice. Like, I'm, I'm really happy that I cast you. And when I watched it, I was like, nah, I don't like it. And in the end, like, uh, some time passed by after the first cut and we had the viewing and in, uh, in the cinema it was kind of a bit better i think it was easier uh, and i thought like yeah maybe it's not too bad but now actually i have like a what, what didn't you like about it i don't know i know like everything <laughs> i didn't like you everything sound as bad as me. but then uh but no like one of the scenes from it right now i use it uh, in my uh, show reel so i think i got no. Well, there you go. Then it can't be that bad. Can I it? think. Yeah, I think it's not too bad. I think. Yeah. I think we're like we are the harshest, harshest, harshest judges. Yeah, yeah definitely. And yeah. um, you know, we massive. I think I don't know about you. I'm a massive overthinker. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I think things. You mean like when before or after? After. After. Yeah. 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 Like replay over over in my head. Oh, I should have done this different. I should have done that different. You know? Yeah. Why Every didn't I do this? Why didn't I do that? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, I mean, like sometimes you're doing a scene, like, and it's just like it doesn't flow, like, or you like, or you think it's kind of alright, but it's like it's fine, it's fine. But then next day, kind of like for some reason, you start replaying the scene, like, and you just straight away you're like, oh, this is the way I would do it. What? It's so natural and easy right now for me. Why didn't I do it back then? Well, because the camera was on. <laughs> yeah, it's weird. Like it's it's weird how. You can rehearse like something for like, I don't know, like 20 times in a row with someone like, and just goes amazing. As soon as like someone presses, you know, on button, like on, on the camera and you're like, Ey! yeah, what do I do with my hands? <laughs> <laughs> I'm the worst with the hands situation, yeah. you know? Yeah. I always think I'm standing funny or even walking. Mm. Oh shit. Shit. I can't walk properly. <laughs> <laughs> it's, Why am I walking funny? It's such a funny thing. Like as soon as you think the most simplest thing, yeah, you know? yeah. Like as soon as you start thinking about, like, oh my god, like this is what I do without thinking about it. But as soon as you start thinking about it, you think like actually someone is watching me and watching me walking. How do I walk? It's, it's, yeah, and it's good when you, if you've got something in a scene, like you say, you're drinking a cup yeah. of tea, it makes it so much easier because you've got something to do, haven't you? Do you know what I mean? You yeah, know? but then you have to work in continuity. Oh yeah, or cigarette. Yeah, have you have you have you shot a film with, with cigarettes? That's the worst. Oh my god, I did so many. Like I I probably smoked like half a pack of cigarettes in like an hour because we were doing like the scene like over and over cigarettes and over and over from, like, different different angles and i like in the end i was like oh my god i haven't smoked so much ever ever yeah i, I had to do um i thought it's funny enough it was a student film and i had to smoke a big fat cigar mm -hmm. and it was like um oh my god my chest at the end of the day it oh, was really? just awful yeah i i'm I not experienced with cigars as i understand like when you smoke a cigar you don't really you're inhale really, it properly. yeah but you can't help it yeah, you know yeah. i mean because i was a smoker at the time yeah, but you, oh, mm. yeah. Mm. You, you do smoke now just wait well listen i shouldn't be vaping really i've give up mm. i give up alcohol about five and a half months ago mm. And then I wasn't really a smoker, but mm -hmm. then because I gave up the alcohol, I started vaping. Yeah. You know? But uh, then I gave up vaping, and then I found one in the drawer the other day. Yeah. I found one in the drawer, and it had a bit in it. Mm. And I thought, oh, I mean, no. oh, yeah. And now I'm back on the vape again. <laughs> okay, if you don't mind, I would want to go back to 
bipolar disorder. Oh, no. Can you explain to me what it is, how it works, what do you experience, how, like, does it change your mind, and what, like, what is bipolar uh, disorder? Bipolar disorder is a mood disorder. Mm. So basically, you get sort of extreme highs and extreme lows. Mm -hmm. So, like, imagine a pendulum swinging that way and that mm -hmm. way. You know, we've all got bipolar in us, I believe, to a certain extent. You know, we all get ups and downs. Mm -hmm. But mine are to the extreme. And basically, what happens is, let's put it this way. When I was a kid, when I was about 16 or 17, I used to go out to raves. Mm -hmm. And we used to take these party drugs called ecstasy. Mm -hmm. So imagine the feeling of an ecstasy tablet times a million. That's how I feel. Mm. So I basically, you get like this euphoric high mm -hmm. and you feel amazing. It's, it's beautiful. You know, you, you get this lovely warm feeling, but the only downside of that is you don't sleep because my mind races so much mm -hmm. <clears throat> and then you get all these, I get like a really creative. So nearly all people with bipolar disorder of highly creative people. Mm -hmm. um, and, um, yeah, you've got people like Stephen Fry, Carrie Fisher, um, who else? Yeah, Virginia Woolf, she was bipolar, the author. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I get all these like crazy ideas. I want to write a book. I want to do this. I want to do that. And, and I'm doing like a hundred things at once. You know what I mean? Um, but as I said, unfortunately, I don't sleep. Sometimes I don't sleep for up to a week. And the downside of not sleeping for a week is you get something called psychosis. And that, is when it turns dark. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because you, you, I hear voices, I hear, I get audio hallucinations, or I think I'm hearing voices. Mm -hmm. I almost feel like, to this day, I don't know if it's real or not, but I get these, I get this almost, like I'm telepathic, mm -hmm. um, you know, and you tell that to the doctors, they're like, yeah, you're having a manic episode, but they've not experienced. I believe if it's happened in my mind, mm -hmm. then it's happened. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, to you know, agree. So it's almost like having like an episode. It's like it's almost like I liken it to. It's like I have a spiritual experience with every single episode, mm -hmm. you know. But unfortunately, I go so high that I have to be scraped off the ceiling, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know. And then obviously, what goes up has yeah. got to come down. Yeah, and then it, it, it becomes a, like a huge depression or like... Well, well, yeah, like, like, well, you're probably well, not even depressed, but it's because you've been so high, it feels like you're depressed. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Well, obviously your, your productivity suffers straight away, like when you have a, a, an episode, right? My productivity? Yeah. You, like you can't... Like, can, can, can you still kind of... Can you still keep functioning? Yeah, for a while, until you burn out. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. So, so basically, I have to take these uh, mood stabilizers. Mm -hmm. So they basically just keep me in the middle, mm -hmm. which is the best place for me, really. Mm -hmm. You know, I love the highs. Don't get me wrong. Mm -hmm. They're great. Yeah. But, you know, there's always consequences. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? And, and you're like, well, what, what should people do if, for example, someone knows anyone, like, and they know, like, you know what? They have an episode. What is the best thing to do? Well, I think first of all, they're their family members. If they know them well, they'll probably know that they're having an episode. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? But maybe speak to one of their family members. Yeah. Um, if you're a really good friend of them, it's, it's probably with me. It's no point. The worst thing that could have happened to me is someone saying you're having an episode, mm -hmm. and I start getting resentful. Do you know what I mean? Because I'm enjoying my moment. Do you know what yeah, I mean? So, yeah, yeah. so let them enjoy it. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You know, but. Um, If you're really concerned, you could phone a crisis help helpline. Maybe if they're on, if they're in a mental health system, maybe or they're, they're you know they flag up on the mm -hmm. records. Maybe I don't know, mm -hmm. but I, you know, but just probably just let it play out. Do you know what I mean? Because um, if it's that bad, the, you know, the person might end up getting hospitalized, or mm -hmm. we might get like. Um, I mean, I've, I've had treatment. I've had a home treatment tr team around my flat before where they've treated me uh, in my own home. Mm -hmm. You know. So they have to give you like uh, maybe antipsychotic medication to bring you off the episode. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. All right. Yeah. yeah, it makes sense. How how good are like the, the like how good is the treatment? Like how uh, sure you are that like those kind of pills that keep you in the middle they will work if you consistently will keep drinking them. 
Absolutely, no, no, definitely, yeah. definitely work. I mean, it's just a matter of finding the right medication. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like trial and error. Some medications, you know, you might not get on with. You have to find the right medication. Mm -hmm. So I don't even know I'm taking them tablets. I take them every day. Yeah. But, you know, I've been, unfortunately, I've made a rod for my own back with my illness because I, I would... I would enjoy those highs so much I wouldn't take my medication mm -hmm. and then I'd end up being hospitalised. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, you know, and, and really I didn't have to go all through that. If I would have just took my meds, mm -hmm. I wouldn't have to go in the hospital. Yeah. You know, but what it is, you know, a, a bad habit of mine was, you know, thinking I'm well. So mm -hmm. you think you're well and then you just, which you, which you're, you know, like now I'm well. Mm -hmm. So I could quite easily go, oh, I'm not taking my pills anymore. I don't need them. Yeah. You know, and, and then they'll come out of my system and then it's like playing a bit of Russian roulette, really. Mm. Are there you any kind mean? of downsides to taking those pills? Like, is there like any kind of side um, effects? I don't know. Maybe long term there might be. It might, mm. might cause some organ damage. I don't, I don't know. Mm. But the, the ones I'm taking at the moment, they also, epileptics take them as well mm -hmm. for epilepsy. Um, but there was a previous medication I was on called lithium. Mm -hmm. and it was really damaging very toxic substance and i used to have to have blood tests because it can affect the kidneys i think or the liver or something like that yeah mm. okay You're but going. yeah it's just part of you know i'm not, i'm quite open about speaking about it mm -hmm. i mean no I, i think i think we need to speak about it more because i mm -hmm. think was, a lot of people uh in general they don't have any understanding of what it is some people think like ah just like it's it's, it's not even real it's just like well oh. the thing is bipolar the word bipolar is banded about way too much mm -hmm. people say to me oh i think i'm bipolar i'm like no mm. you're not bipolar you would know about it if you have bipolar mm -hmm. you know um yeah so the downside of it I, my episodes have played out publicly on social media and mm. you know the stuff i regret but you know <laughs> At the end of the day, it's my illness and not me. You know, and some people might yeah. think I've been a bit of an arsehole or something, mm -hmm. but you know, if people who know me mm -hmm. know that it's just you know, it's you know, it's my my bipolar. No, you know? I mean because yeah, like uh, I I remember like there were a couple of times when I kind of I, I read some of your statuses on Facebook and I thought like yeah, probably he he's having a, there you like, go, a, so you know, a case, you do, but at yeah. the same time, I, like I had no idea what to do. I thought like, well, should I kind of reach out? Should I tell him? Should I ask him something? Should I like, or should I just like kind of let it play it out? Yeah, and, the best and, thing you could have done, let it play yeah. out. Let yeah. it play out. Because I'm just, I mean, there's no way anyone could talk me down from it mm -hmm. or try and make me get some sort of help or intervention. Mm -hmm. I, I'm in my own little bubble. Yeah. And I'm, in, I'm going to enjoy that episode. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Until it sort of. You know, it turns on me almost. But. Yeah, but like at the same time, like well, 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 like when you have a friend and you know, like okay, like there's an episode, like but you at the same time, especially when you don't know much about like the the actual disorder, like yeah. you might think like, is there kind of like down like danger side? Is there like some kind of like yeah, way? because you can lose all you look basically what happens is you lose all your inhibitions, so you can put yourself in dangerous situations. You mm. know what I mean? You know, yeah. yeah. But do like do you get some kind of like crazy like not crazy, but like do you get some kind of like big ideas like i will do this tomorrow and like this will bring me i don't know like i will i will invent like i don't know time machine or whatever yeah you, you could do that yeah, yeah you can get highly creative trust me mm. but um you know I, i've got myself in all sorts of trouble mate with, with episodes um yeah like because you almost become it's like you feel like i don't know what god is or who god is but you feel mm -hmm. almost godlike you feel invincible mm -hmm. you know what i mean you know Yeah. Um, so yeah, you get you can you get. I put myself in some precarious situations. Mm. You know what I mean? And like, it's like, it's like you when you come down off the episode, you're like, shit, man, that was dangerous. You know, mm. because I lost all my inhibitions. It's like it's like waking up from a bad hangover sometimes. You know, what mm. I mean? you know when it wears off. Yeah, because it releases all all your serotonin at once. And yeah, all your feel good chemicals. You know what I mean? Mm. You know, so when all of those chemicals have been depleted. Then you're gonna feel like shit afterwards. You know what I mean? You know? Mm. This is years ago, and I've I've been openly public about my condition. Mm -hmm. But I did remember someone said to me, "Oh, don't don't mention you got bipolar. You won't get any acting work." Mm. And I thought, no, fuck that. I'm telling everyone. And do do you think it actually kind of like uh, ever played against you, like in, no. in, in acting? No, mm. not at all. Not at all. Mm. And I think, especially nowadays, it's, the stigma is. It's not as bad as it used to be mm. at all, you know. Not not as bad as at all, especially with like you know. I'm, I've got you know I'm neurodiverse, so 
you know, I think the industry's got so much better at recognizing mm-hmm. everyone's, um, you know, neurodiversity. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. And I think, I mean, like, and again, like if it's out of control, if it doesn't harm your process, if it doesn't harm the production, like then <clears throat> what, like what, it, it doesn't no, matter at all. No, no, definitely not. Definitely not. I mean, if I'm taking my tablets and doing what I'm supposed to do to them, I, I'm responsible. Now, what it was, I've not been responsible in the past and now, I got to a stage where I'm like, I can't do that anymore. I need to be responsible and take mm-hmm. responsibility for my condition. Mm-hmm. And all it is to take a few tablets. What's that? I mean, my mum said to me, you know, like, I take tablets for my blood pressure. You know, it's no big deal. Just take your tablets, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? You know, and manage it, you know, with, um, you know, things like drinking alcohol. I don't, I don't do that anymore, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm actually in recovery for addiction as well. Mm. you know which uh which affected me so yeah so it's all good so i've got two recoveries so i've got a dual diagnosis mm. but um yeah it's the best thing i've ever done mate you know and now i'm sort of conscious if any signs come along or, you know say if i was having an episode mm. i'm more conscious now you know what i mean yeah you know yeah. and i can catch it and nip it in the bud before mm. you know before i'm selfish and i enjoy that high do you know what i mean yeah, that's that's great man that's great i'm really happy for you and yeah I'm, thank I'm, you it, it's it's very good. If we talk about you know not just acting but life is in general, what motivates you? Um, what motivates me? Just my heart beating motivates me, mate. <laughs> you know, I just love life. I love I love waking up yeah. to a new day. Do you know what I mean? You know, I love just being uh, in the present moment. Mm-hmm. And I just, I just love life. I love mm-hmm. life. I love people. I love music. I love the arts. I love, um, yeah, I, I just, I don't know. I'm, I, a lot of people don't like being 50. I'm 50 this year, but mm-hmm. I'm sort of, I feel like I'm in the prime of my life at the moment. Mm-hmm. And I'm just really comfortable for the first time in my own skin. Do you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Yeah. Should be a great feeling. Yeah, definitely. So what motivates me, going back to that question, um, I don't know. I really can't answer that. I don't know. All right. Well, you know what? If you're happy when you just wake up every morning, if you're happy to get up from bed, I think that's already a good motivator. Happiness (laughs) happiness is success in my Mm -hmm. eyes. Do you know what I mean? If I'm happy, I'm successful no matter what I'm doing. Yes. Yeah. It's a good way of looking at it. Yeah, because some people, like for some people, like it other way around, like they want success to be happy. Yeah. I mean, I've never been interested. Material things don't bother me, mm-hmm. never bother me. Money, is, I've never motiv- been motivated by money. Mm-hmm. It's nice to have it, but I've yeah. never been motivated by it. It's not been my motivation, you mm-hmm. know what I mean? Um, so, yeah, I'm not a material person. Mm-hmm. Um, I like to think I, I'm trying, I just... You know, I, I just, I try and be a good person. I try, I don't get it right all the time, but I mm. try and be a good person, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It's all we can do in it. I like it. I try and be, I try to be as, as good as a human being as I can. But am I, you know, I've been five and a half months clean and sober from mm-hmm. alcohol and other substances. Yeah. Which I'm pretty open about, you know, mm-hmm. I'm in recovery and my sobriety motivates me. Yeah. Definitely, you know, and I'll, I'll try to cling on to that till mm-hmm. the day I die. Yeah. Nice. I love it. I love it, man. <laughs> Look, you know what? I have just a quick blitz round. Uh, texting or talking? Talking. Cats or dogs? Cats, of course. Uh, your one guilty pleasure? Oh, oh, um... Oh, uh, what's that show called? Um, Below Deck. Do you know that show, Below Deck, yeah. when they're on a crew? No, yeah. it's, it's really shit, trash TV. <laughs> um, they're basically on a, on a super yacht, and it's basically about the, the crew and, mm-hmm. and the guests that come on the yacht. Mm-hmm. It's reality TV. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and I really like it. It's my guilty pleasure. All right. What makes you laugh? Uh, you. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. What makes me laugh? Oh, man. Um, it's quite, I, I, I don't know, because I find comedy is not as funny as it used to be, mm-hmm. you know? I find it I find it really hard to make me laugh nowadays, you know, with, with comedy. Yeah. 
Um, maybe maybe you've seen too much of it in real life, so it, it's not funny anymore. <laughs> <laughs> maybe. <laughs> um, all right. All right. Uh, yeah, what makes know. you angry? Um, what makes me angry? Not nothing makes me angry really yeah. anymore. No, I'm, no, I'm not. I'm, no, all the anger's been beaten out of me. Nice, nice. Well, I mean, beaten out of you, maybe not nice, but the fact that you can stay not angry. Yeah, I'll, I'll treat, ang, 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 anger's not good. So yeah, I, I used to be really angry when I when I was younger. Mm -hmm. I had so much anger in me. Yeah, you know, and I think it's all down to my condition, but that's all. Mm. It's all gone. All right. Yeah. Do you have any nicknames? No, Scotty boy. Okay. What dish do you cook best? Oh God, um, I'm really guilty. I don't, I don't really cook a lot, no. you know. But I do do. When I, I tell you what, my favorite dish. Well, I say my favorite dish. I've only cooked it twice, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, is um, sea bass. Yeah, with paprika, mm -hmm. and you season it with uh, paprika, salt, and pepper. Yeah. And it's basically sea bass in a lemon and butter sauce served mm. with asparagus and couscous. I did that a couple yeah, of times. Sounds very good. Your favorite character in any fictional story, book, screen, video game? Don Corleone in The Godfather. Nice. Good, good answer. Yeah. Uh, Star Wars or The Lord of the Rings? Star Wars. <laughs> you say <laughs> Lord of the Rings bores the <laughs> hell out of me. Okay. All right. Uh, when was the last time you cried? Um, when was the last time I cried? Uh, oh, do you know what? It's when I went into recovery. Mm -hmm. When I went, when I, when I, when I, the first day I went to a, to a meeting in a fellowship mm -hmm. of Alcoholics Anonymous and I was broken and I was on my knees and I cried my eyes out like a baby, mm -hmm. realizing I had a problem. Mm -hmm. I think it's, it's a very good first step, right? Yeah, definitely. Oh. Definitely. Um, how can people reach you if they want to work with you? Uh, they can email me um, at scottyactor at gmail.com. Okay. And the very last thing is uh, I texted you yesterday. I asked you to prepare one cool thing. Uh, it's, a, it's a segment that I actually borrowed from another podcast called Script Notes, uh, that okay. is a pod podcast about screenwriting by Craig um, Craig Mason and John August. And then have the, they have this like one cool thing, something that you like that you think people would like to. Right. I thought about this last night and mm -hmm. funny enough, I started, I've been, I subscribed to Apple TV and I was flicking through, flicking through and mm -hmm. I started watching a documentary. I've not finished it yet, but mm -hmm. I highly recommend it. It's called Still, S-T-I-L-L, -L, mm -hmm. and it's all about Michael J. Fox. Mm -hmm. from his story from how he 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 made it from literally nothing mm -hmm. to the to the star that he made and it and it and it talks you know obviously all about his park consistency yeah, yeah, and yeah. his journey now and it's it's so sad but so he's such an awesome man mm -hmm. um you know and he, he basically he started with with absolutely nothing you know and he, he he lived in this he moved to hollywood he just took a gamble moved to hollywood and he had one sink in his t this dingy little flat. It was one sink to wash in and do his dishes and everything. And he used to wash his dishes in the shower and use, use shampoo to wash the dishes because he mm. couldn't afford detergent. Wow. You know, he, he had he sold all his furniture because he to, just so he could make you know the journey to the next audition. Mm. And that gives me inspiration. Mm. And um and yeah, and then he was doing at the time of Back to the Future. He was working on a comedy called Family Ties. Mm -hmm. And he had to do t juggle them two jobs. So in the daytime, he was working on Family Ties, a sitcom. Mm -hmm. And then in the evening, he went to the set of Back to the Future and he was playing two different characters every single day. Wow. I'm like, I'm like wow. Now that is that is a man I aspire to be. You nice. know, and he's, he, he's got such a great sense of humor, like mm -hmm. even with his condition and that. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I, I recommend that. I highly recommend that. That documentary is called Still. Yeah. All right. Cool. On Apple TV. Apple TV. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, Scotty, thank you so much for being my very first guest, for going through all of it. And <clears throat> maybe in the final edit, there will be <laughs> none of it, but we've had a lot of technical <laughs> technical troubles. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We went through a lot of things, a lot of breaks, a lot of 
copying everything to the laptop and trying to fix some files and everything. Uh, it was a bumpy road, but it was very enjoyable. Thank well, you so much. And whose fault was was that? You could explain to the audience. Mine. No, <laughs> it was my cat. <laughs> my cat knocked the camera off, right? Yeah, and then we didn't get her on like on camera in the end because we did her on camera, but the file that she was on. Oh, is we didn't damaged. get her on camera. Oh, we didn't get her on camera in the end. Yeah. She's been she's been she's been banished to the spare room anyway. So yeah. yeah. But no, mate, it's been an absolute pleasure, man. Honestly. Thanks, man. And yeah. I hope uh will would you be open to, you know, do it again someday? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, I think because I think I think we have a lot of stuff to talk still. Yeah, uh, we were talking for quite a long time. Yeah, no, uh, we I think we could. Put, yeah. Well, we have talked all day. Yeah. <laughs> we have. Yeah. All right, thanks, man. Thank you very much. You're more than welcome, mate. Thank you.